What's up YouTube? Today we're going to be reviewing the Blue Eddy EB70S. I'm going to be taking it to failure in this video, so don't try this at home with some of the things I plug into it. First off, if you like this review, hit like and subscribe because it helps me out. If you don't want to watch the whole thing, just know that this thing is a beast. First, let's get the specs out of the way. This thing is 716 watt hours of capacity, which means it does last a fair while. The life cycle is over 2,500 charges, which is amazing in a battery of this price. It also weighs 21 and a half pounds or almost 10 kilograms. The first thing you'll notice is a separate DC and AC output. Let's power it up each side individually, and you can see it turning on. You have regular USB, USB-C, 12 volt, and a cigarette lighter attachment. You will notice the display has 20% increments. I wouldn't mind that being a bit lower because the difference between 60 and 40% is a, a fair difference, but I would rather be able to tell what it is than most of these that don't have a display at all. You can also see the input and the output wattage, which is a fantastic feature, and we'll get into that. On the AC side, you have four AC 800 watt outputs. There's also a nice light on here. It draws about two watts, which means it's going to last days at 100%. Now, let's do 50%, 100%, and then SOS. The charger for this is also a beast. And we'll get into that after. With the adapter, it takes three to four hours to charge. On solar, you can charge it between five and eight hours. The 12 volt car adapter will take seven to eight hours to charge. There's also a great 24 month warranty, which is better than a lot of the ones I've seen. Now, one last little bit of information before we get into the cool tests. First off, this thing will output 800 watts. So whatever device you're plugging in, try to make sure it's gonna stay under 800 watts. It does have 1400 watts surge, and I'll explain that here. On things like motors, heaters, compressors, they surge and then they drop down to their operating wattage. Here's an example of a 40 year old beer fridge in my basement. As you can see in this image, it surges to about 200 watts in the beginning and then averages out about 120, 130 watts. It runs for two hour periods and four times within a 24 hour period. If you do the math of 716 watt hours, I'd be able to run this for more than 24 hours. Here's another example of my gaming PC. It idles around 150 and goes up to about 400 while playing first person shooters. It's an i7 with a 2070 GPU two monitors, a router, an access point, and other gaming devices all plugged into the same power bar. I'm monitoring this with smart plugs using Home Assistant, which is pretty cool for measuring your power draw. For the first test, we're gonna charge this one wheel pint with a hypercharger. As you can see, it hits about 210 watts and then drops down to its operating wattage. I would be able to run four of these at the same time without any issue at all. Just for fun, we'll try the regular one wheel charger, not the hypercharger. On a regular charger, I'd be able to charge up to eight of these at the same time for an hour. Knowing that, I can pretty much guarantee five or six charges on my one wheel pint out of this, maybe more depending. Next up, we'll try something with a motor in it. This is a cordless sander. It hit about 250 watts, you'd be able to run this thing for almost three hours, no problem. Here's a time-lapse video of using a paint sprayer on my house. While it only runs about 200 watts, it peaks at 400. The main issue I had with this is that you continually have to keep pulling the trigger and turning it on and off and on and off, so it was running at 400 most of the time. I used it for two hours and I still have between 40 and 60 charge left. These come in very handy when you're not near a plug and you're doing something outside. Next up, we have a Marshall 175 watt guitar amp. The neat thing about these is even though they're listed at 175 watts, I'm going to crank this thing up and you'll see that it does not draw the full amount. As you can see there, we only hit about 30 watts and I had this thing cranked pretty loud. In an emergency, you can power your computer and your modem so you can have outbound connectivity. These things are great camping. For myself personally, when I go one wheeling, if I'm hitting the trails, I'll put this thing in my vehicle. I just go back to my car, charge up, have a lunch, and I can hit the trail again without having to leave because my one wheel is ran out of charge. These last two tests, I did not think they were going to work just due to the wattage it takes to turn over a motor in a vehicle or a snowblower. But here, let's check this one out. Let's see if we can start a gas powered snowblower. Overload. It's close though. This is what happens when you overpower this thing. It doesn't break, it just gives you a surge warning and you've known that this thing will not work in this device. Here's another failure with my miter saw. I also didn't think this one was gonna work. Might have got a little greedy on that one. <laughs> I'm gonna plug in the power charger now. This might be something you wanna consider if you're buying this device. 
This thing has a fairly large fan in it to keep it cool, which is not a bad feature, but it does make some noise. Now let's plug in the device itself. You'll see there's another large fan. I usually charge this at convenient times, in my basement, whatever. I just felt I should recommend that if you plan on charging this beside your bedroom or something while you're sleeping, it does make a little bit of noise. If you don't like the fan noise, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Due to how fast this charges and the batteries in there, this is a good safety feature to have, so it's not really a con. So there you have it. If you plan on doing things outside where you're going to need power and you're not going to be near an outlet, this thing, I highly recommend it. I've had no issues with it, and it's worked great for everything I've needed to do. If I was planning on starting a snowblower or using heavy machinery, obviously I would have got a bigger one in the first place. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below, and hopefully I can make some more reviews for you guys shortly.